a couple of months ago I posted a video about making a 22 barrel out of a large piece of rebar. We'll call that part one, I guess. See the description. I thought I came out okay, but several commenters took uh, the time to point out a few opportunities for improvement and gave some uh, constructive criticism. I'd like to address those concerns now. Here's the piece of wood I'll be using for the stock, the foregrip rather, on this one. I don't know if you can tell, but this cutout right here is about the size and shape of a large muzzle-loading pistol that was also made out of this piece. Here's a 22 Calibri for comparison. I'll be using probably this piece right here to do a little foregrip. It's probably a little bit less than an inch and a half wide material. Let's get to it.
Looks like that's going to line up pretty well. See if that fits. Perfect fit, first time. Thank goodness. Let's get that screw sunk in. Unfortunately, if we continue to use this screw, there's a good chance that the whole grip will crack in half because this is a, a sunk screw. So I'll probably just put a, I don't know, socket cap or something like that. Well, there it is. Four grip is done. It's uh, a little bit bigger than is really designed for this gun because this gun is for youth. It's the small frame model, this particular one. So it fits my hand a little bit better. Uh, yeah, good fit against everything else. The foregrip and the buttstock are not going to match, but who cares? It's made of rebar. Uh, for right now, I just have a socket cap screw here. I'll, who cares? I'll keep it that way. Time to put some uh, finish on the thing. And I had this left over from my previous stock project. True oil. It worked out pretty well. Let's see what we can do. We're just gonna... Let's see, I don't have a little cup to put this in. Boy, that is really stuck on there. It's been probably a year since I opened this bottle. Use it the first time. The True Oil. It's uh, pretty wacky stuff. I guess it's a little bit like linseed oil. I don't know. Not a wood guy. I don't do wood. Here we go. Now, okay, we'll just put a few drops of this gook in there. Now remember, always work on the dustiest surface you can possibly find, and make sure your hands are covered in oil. Here we go. This stuff is actually really cool, in all, in all seriousness. Like, it, it really turns wood into awesome pretty instantly. Again, I'm not a wood guy, so maybe all finishes do this, but I was really impressed the first time I used this finish because it just made boring looking uh, walnut turn into super awesome looking walnut. And I'm putting it on pretty thick here, so. Now you probably can't see that on the camera. Maybe I'll use this. We use this wide face and see if you can just tell what it looks like. It kind of looks like, uh, like the wood is getting wet, you know, like water. Except it's pretty looking. And I'm sure I'll get lots of comments on my finish spreading technique. <laughs> it's not important, guys. Remember, rebar barrel. Not important. Also, this uh, particular piece of walnut is kind of a defective piece. You can see this half is white and this half is brown because this is like a bark piece. This white side is kind of kind of fluffy bark stuff. It's not great. Yeah, I pulled this out of the trash. This was a cutoff piece. Ba, 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 ba. It's probably going to look a little bit different around the end grain. And where we have sloping across the grain down here, and that'll probably look funky. Smooth that out there. Didn't quite get enough. Did I'm really dumping this stuff on. Like once you are into it, you can use like two or three drops for the whole stock, you know. But when the wood is sucking it all up, you gotta gotta lay it on there. Not looking at the camera either, so it's probably out of focus. You can tell I let my mind wander when I do tasks like this. See, that just already looks pretty awesome. You can't tell on the camera because it's kind of wet looking, but man, it already looks great. The first time I did this too, I was really surprised how uh, hard the finish was once it cured, once it dried, you know? I was expecting it to be kind of, you know, varnishy, kind of like, uh, I don't know, but it wasn't, it wasn't at all. Here we go with that end grain there, make sure that's soaking it up. Because this will, uh, this will leave. It, it doesn't run or sag necessarily, because you you don't you know you're putting it on with your finger, but it will leave kind of thick spots that you can see, even on the end grain. 
if it's not too thirsty. Yeah, wow, see that actually is looking really cool. <laughs> Surprising when something actually works. All right, I've kind of painted myself into a corner here. See if I can do this last inside part and then we'll let the first coat dry. Get down in there. Gotta get down in there. I'm gonna put grease down here. Make the thing open and close nice and smoothly. It's a great fit. Everything fit up really nicely after I welded on the, uh, the coupler, you know, to for the screw down for this thing. Uh, everything is just nice and snug fit. So this is a little bit tight. I'll put a little bit of oil on there, just a drop or two. That'll make it open up nicely. And just, you know, it'll screw the finish up right in here, but who cares? That's a not a public part anyway. Alrighty, I think we've got everything for our first coat. I don't want to leave too many fingerprints in here. I'm just going to rub it down so that there's no thick spots or anything like that. Yeah, don't want any thick spots. Alright. And I'll just make sure we got it all over here. See, I can see it against the light. The camera can't see it glinting against the light. So I'm, that's why I'm holding it at these weird angles. I'm using the light to see the liquidy spots and rub them flat. All right, cool. Now we're going to hang this bad boy up. For the first coat to cure. Give it a good 24 hours. Okay, here's the plan. I'm gonna make a simple extractor, kind of based on the one, uh, I have a little Derringer pistol, a double 22 Magnum, that has a, uh, its ejector is kind of, uh, you know, levered, kind of cammed so that it's automatic when you open the thing. Mine's not gonna be that way. But I'm gonna see what we can get, so I'm gonna uh, cut a little, a little bit with this uh, Keyway cutter. Best tool I have for the job, maybe. And we'll see how it works out. Okay, so I'm going to try to make the ejector out of uh, 1095 spring steel because I think anything, uh, you know, mild steel, I think will just bend up. So. Okay, it's the first prototype of the uh, ejector piece. I'm mostly just hand filing it. There's two little tines on the side to keep it aligned and then uh, that goes in there and fits nice and tight. So now I'm going to cut off this tab and start doing the fine work. So, crank the action open. There's our ejector bar. See the ejector has a little, uh, little groove cut into it that goes under the rim of the cartridge. And I filed some grooves here as well to help catch your fingers. They work actually really well so that you can pull it out. It's just manually operated. That sits in there all the time. When you're ready to eject the shell, you just pull it up. You can use two fingers, you can use two hands, whatever it takes, it's pretty easy. So, take our Super Calibri, pop that in there, it's a live round, so I gotta be careful. And we just pull up to eject. That's it, grab the case by the rim. Quite easy.